So what you're looking to achieve is from task 5, which was your standard cycle operation, which happened to be A plus B plus 5 second delay, then B minus A minus. <clears throat> your next task is asking to make a cyclic in this case. So you still have the same standard format. So you can copy out task 5, use your copy feature. P6, which is your sixth task along, paste it back in, then you need to make uh, changes to it. What we're looking to do is to make it cyclic. So at the very first instance, you have to press start, which is labeled up at the top, and that starts your, your sequence with A plus A out, as it's labeled here. Oh, sorry? Yeah. Um, so from there, you have your start button, which is your only condition to actually start it. As you scroll down through, you've got your, there's your time delay part of it. And then retracting uh, AN and then resetting AN finally to finish off. Jumps back to look, waiting for the start button again. So you still need that intervention every single time of pressing the start button to make it cycle. Uh, task 6 is asking you to actually make it uh, cycle automatically. So to do that, you need an OR condition at the start of a flag bit. For instance, F0.0. And that's the flag bit turned well, it's not actually turned on yet, but we need to turn it on at some point. So you turn it on as soon as you start the cycle the first time. So when you set A out, also set the flag bit F0.0. So what's happening here now is you now have a choice at the start. You either activate the start button, or if flag 0.0 is active, then it will start setting A out, and that's your start of your sequence. And it also turns on F0.0 every single time too. If it's already on, it just stays on. That's perfectly normal. You then keep progressing through, obviously, the rest of your cycle back to the loop, which is the top. And then you've got a condition again of either press the start button or F0.0. What's that? It's an internal piece of memory. It's like a, it's an output that doesn't appear physically. Yeah. That's right. So when you set F0.0, that's loading it basically with a value of 1, you're turning it on. So when it comes back through and you have an OR circuit, so you're asking if the start button's pressed or if F0.0 is pressed. Well, because you've already activated F0.0, then it is active, and then that side of your OR uh, is true, then that means the then part of your statement becomes active straight away, and it keeps cycling over and over and over again. And if I left it the way it was now, you press start and then it would never stop until you actually power down the machine. So that means we need some way of turning F0.0 off. And the way to do that is change over to another program, P7 I have. It's blank at the minute. You can do this as a step program or as a blank program. It doesn't really matter. Um, <clears throat> have a step and then if, and then this is where you need a separate uh, button. Uh, I'm not too sure exactly what I've called mine. Um, I need to check my allocation list. Uh, stop. So I0.5 is my stop button. It's got the symbolic operand of stop and it's wired normally closed. You find that on your button box at the top if you move in a couple of contacts. The first two sets of contacts per button are normally open and the second two are normally closed. So that's the second side, the normally closed side you're looking to wire into. Uh, so that's the one I'm looking for for my allocations list. So if not, stop. I have to use the negate function here because it's wired normally closed. So basically if it's not on, um, then reset F0.0. And then I need to jump back to the loop again. And then obviously label the step with loop. Okay, it's very, very short. It's so short that it's almost pointless having it in the step program. You may as well just left it blank, which would look, you know, like that, and that's fine. Now every time that you press the stop button effectively, then it would reset F0.0. So at any time in the cycle, if you pressed F or the stop button rather, it deactivates F0.0. So you imagine this here, um, which was turned on here, would be turned off, say, at a random point. So. For instance, during the time delay here, if you press the stop button, F0.0 gets turned off. You still complete the rest of the cycle. You get to the bottom, it asks you to jump to the loop. So up to the top of the program, 
and you get back to the start condition. So it's either wanting a start button or F0.0. You've now turned off F0.0, therefore that won't activate the executive part of your statement. So the only way to start it now is the start button again. So that's how you make it cyclic. Yes, uh, to get the two programs to run together, uh, you go back to your main controlling program P0 and just make sure you have then set P6 and set P7. So remember there's no uh, and or R logic under the then part, it's just set and reset. So set P6, set P7. Any other questions on it? Um, you don't have to label your flag bits. Um, if you check out my allocation list here, once I've used it in my text, it would prompt me. So, for instance, if I show you how it does that, if I use um, then set f0.1, for instance, so I've never used that before. So, you see straight away it's prompted me to fill in the information about it. That will automatically generate that in the allocation list for me now. But what you've seen is under my allocation list, I didn't put a symbolic operand in and I didn't put a comment about it. It's because I'm only using one flag bit. It's pretty obvious what it is, but once you get into more programming, you might be using a lot of flags. It might be worthwhile using um, symbolic and comment um, for your allocation list. So you can tell the difference between them. But I didn't for that case. So that's why you've seen that this one is also empty of symbolic operand and comment. You can still go in and say, um, you know, you can call it cycle underscore flag, for instance, well, it's too many characters, FLG, for instance, like that, and you can type a comment of whatever you wished, and you can save that then, and then that should uh, appear up once you refresh, like that. So obviously just save your, your two programs, six and seven, you see it now has a cycle flag label beside it, just as I had done. Save both of them, just make sure they're being called. So P1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. You're not using them anymore, which was our previous ones. Just make sure 0, 6, and 7 are ticked. And then remember to go through your error checking. So I've got two errors here somewhere. Uh, invalid sequence sentence parts. Ah, I forgot to delete that out. Yep. So obviously tick any extra bits out that you didn't need. Uh, back to zero error, zero warnings. That's you ready to download the NF with F5. Okay.